Dear friends, these are unusual, uncertain, and unsettling times. It's shocking to think how much our world has changed in such a brief time. Because of the virus, we're told to stay indoors, not to travel. We're to work from home. Some are being laid off or have had their hours reduced. Children will be out of school for an extended period of time. Yes, our lives and our very communities have been disrupted. The coming days and weeks hold lots of unknowns. And because of that, some people are crippled with fear. Wherever you find yourself, I'm praying that you'll sense God's peace in the midst of this storm. Let us remember the words of the psalmist in Psalm 46, verse 10, where it says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be confident in the promise that God has not and will never abandon us. We are people of faith, and we cling to that at this very time. As I sit in this empty sanctuary today, I, I think back on happier times, times when we've gathered together in this place to worship God. One of my favorite seasons is Thanksgiving. I enjoy that time with family, food, and football. And I also look forward every Thanksgiving to singing the Thanksgiving hymns, hymns such as we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. And the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Perhaps these are some of your favorite Thanksgiving hymns as well. You conjure up in your mind the image of our congregation singing them with Tom Fletcher playing the pipe organ at a lively tempo. And the church just full of people thinking about the feast on Thursday of stuffed turkey with cranberry sauce. But that is not always the image that comes to my mind when we sing the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Because I know and, and I want to share with you the history of that hymn. This hymn arose out of very tragic circumstances. It was written by Martin Reichhardt, a pastor who served in the town of Ellenburg, which is about 15 miles from Dresden, Germany. There was a virus, a plague in Europe in 1637. It was most likely the bubonic plague. And during the great pestilence of 1637, Pastor Rickhart conducted over 2,000 burial services, sometimes officiating at more than 20 services a day. And yet in the midst of that very tragic circumstance, Pastor Rickhart wrote the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. I want us to listen now as the Mormon Tabernacle Choir sings this inspiring hymn. The first stanza expresses thanksgiving. Even in the midst of these tragic circumstances, thanksgiving for the blessings of God. The second verse is, is a prayer for God's care and keeping. And it's only in the second stanza do we see a mention of the tragic circumstances of the virus. It's found in the verse, and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed. And believe me, we are perplexed these days.
The third and final stanza of the hymn is a doxology of praise, praising the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even in the midst of all the tragedy and confusion, this pastor could praise God and could trust in God's care. Our attitudes, our mental health is just as important today as we face the coronavirus. And so today I want to ask you to do two things. The first challenge is I want to challenge you to trust in God's care, not to become overly anxious, dwelling on the what ifs this happens or what if that happens. What's the worst case scenario that could possibly happen to me? What if the cor coronavirus is unstoppable? But instead, many times throughout the day, I want you to say that verse from Psalm 46 to yourself, be still and know that I am God. I'm in charge. Secondly, I want to challenge you to connect with one another. The last great tragedy in our nation's history was 9-11. And after the events of that day, our nation came together. We supported one another. We cared about our neighbor. We checked up on our neighbor. The churches were filled with people for several months after 9-11. But this coronavirus tragedy is something very different. Because of the nature of the tragedy, we are forced to be isolated to be apart from one another. And that makes it challenging for us to support one another in this time of great need. And yes, yet that's the very thing we need to do. Each member of our church should receive a phone call very soon from one of the deacons or elders of the church. And the purpose is just to touch base, to, to see how you're doing, uh, perhaps to pray with you over the phone. But it's not only the elders and the deacons who should be doing this. I would ask each one of you to pick up the telephone be, because we can't physically be close to one another and to reach out to one another. I'm challenging you today to call three people each day on the telephone and just say, I care about you and I just want to see how you're doing. We need to stay connected. We need to support each other in these challenging times. God bless you. Keep the faith. And now may God strengthen you in his glorious might. And may Jesus Christ, his son, go before you to lead you. May he be above you to protect you and beneath you to sustain you in your times of trouble. May Christ Jesus be beside you to be your friend. And may he dwell within you to fill you with his love and his peace that nothing in the world can ever, ever take away. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, David. As church administrator in charge of finances, I see the struggle that everyone is going through financially. I'm going through it personally, and the church is as well. We continue to faithfully serve all of you as your needs arise, especially during this time. If anyone needs paper products, food, or even prayer, we're making it our best effort to help you as best we can with the help of our phone tree. While making every effort to help all of our members, we continue to ask you to continue to faithfully give. 
not only in our efforts to help all of you, but also because, just like everyone else, we must continue paying all of our vendors. I want to minimize the amount of exposure for everyone, if possible. I realize that some of you may have community mailboxes or a P.O. box that you must walk into a post office in order to send mail. Please, don't risk your health by trying to mail us a check. With that said, we have a new way that everyone can donate. Please go to our website, www.fpcnapa.org, and look for the online giving link on the top right corner of the page. This will take you to a donate page where you can choose several things, one time or recurring giving. You can donate by bank account or credit card. You can even choose how you want your funds to be distributed. Our prayer is that we're able to continue serving you as well as to continue paying our vendors so when the doors open to the church again, we will be here for you. We continue lifting you all up in our prayers. Thank you, and please don't hesitate to call me or email me if you have any questions or concerns. I can be reached by emailing me at lisa at fpcnapa.org or by calling me at 707-224-8693, extension 101. Thank you. Hi all, it's Wes Simmons, the youth director. I hope you guys are doing well. Throughout this time period, as it's harder for us to stay connected to each other and stay connected to God, we're going to aim to do exactly that. So the best way to stay connected to what we're doing as far as youth pro programs go is to follow our Instagram, which is at FPN Youth. Again, that's at FPN Youth. And through that, we'll post information about how we're going to stay connected to each other virtually, as well as we're going to post resources on how we can stay connected to God throughout this time. Hi, First Press families. Oh, I really miss seeing your smiling faces, but don't touch your face, okay? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching us here on this new digital platform. Uh, we're really excited to connect in this way with you and um, really kind of excited to kind of leap into the future and uh, look for looking for new ways to connect with you. So. Uh, we want you to know that you matter to us very much and we want you to remember that we're here for you in whatever way you need so whether you need a prayer a word of encouragement um, uh, even homework help and i'm not kidding about that <laughs> i did homeschool all three of my kids and uh, so i can be there for you uh, so please do reach out whether it's through our phones um, email uh, on the website or Facebook, just keep in contact with us. Um, we're really looking forward to, to doing that with you. Uh, okay, so now for the fun announcement. So next Sunday, we're going to be doing Sunday school, but um, in a little different way. Uh, we're gonna be doing it via an app called Zoom. So if you haven't heard of it by now, um, it's something that you can download on your computer or on your phone uh, and I'll send you a link for a meeting time that we're going to have so we will be meeting next Sunday at 10 30 our usual time and so we'll be able to check in we'll be able to watch a Bible story do a little worship time um, I'm really looking forward to, to doing this um, in, a, in a different way um, we'll even have an activity that you can do right in the comfort of your own home need to put on just leave your jammies on you can do that um, and it'll just be with stuff that you have at, at your own house so, um, so nothing nothing huge but but it's just gonna be another way that we can connect with you so we're really looking forward to that um, so be looking on your in your inbox I'm gonna send you an email that'll have the, the link not only for the meeting but with instructions on how to download the app and what you need to do to get yourself set up so that we can hit the ground running on Sunday, um, on next Sunday, on the 29th. So, um, so stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to keeping in touch. If you need to call me, you can do that. Um, most of you have my number. If not, just email me at children at fpcnapa.org. And I might be happy to connect with you that way as well. 
So um, please keep in touch. And um, I'm really looking forward to next Sunday and meeting you on Zoom. So God bless, and we'll see you soon.